it can feel very misleading to speak about this because I remember how it was when I was a listener <laughs> or when there was listening rather than speaking about this, um, that I couldn't help but infer that the one speaking about it knew what they were speaking about. And I know I say this every, every meeting, but it, but it is, it is right at the heart of what wants to be said. And what wants to be said is that there is nothing to find and there is no one that finds what they're looking for. And there are no experts. <laughs> this is, <laughs> and it's very ironic, the irony being that the ones speaking about it are the ones who are least expert to speak about this because it's very obvious that they couldn't be an expert. So there are no novices. There's no one getting closer. And certainly no one who arrives. There's no arrival. Because there isn't a destination. There isn't someone that's in a, one place and that can move to another place. And Tim didn't find what he was looking for. <laughs> um, There's no possibility of finding what you're looking for. And then here it is. Not at all the way you thought it would be. just exactly how it is. Just as it is. And the loss that's spoken about, the loss, there is a real, a, a very palpable sense of loss in the losing of dreams and hopes. Um, and in a way, they're not even, they're not even lost because they remain as what they are, dreams and hopes and fantasies and imagination. And of course, that happens just the same the sense of reality that it had, the sense of possibility that it has. This is the end of possibilities. And yet, it's all possibilities. <laughs> Everything is paradoxical. So there is no possibility in an imagined future, but then this appears exactly as it does life being exactly as it is. No knowing how it is or why it is or what it is. And yet all that knowing appears as well, all that knowing. But it's, it seemed to be empty, what we call knowledge. as well as being the knowledge that we say we know, 
it's just it's also absolutely empty completely empty empty of real substance just words words that say that they know and amazingly in the absence of them of things just being real they're <laughs> in their unreality they're actually more real again don't try and make sense of that <laughs> when when i said when i i said i knew what something was i knew what was happening i knew the things that were happening i knew they were happening to me then that that's a veil a seeming veil it's not real but it seemingly separates what i've called me from reality from what there is by saying i know it the saying i know it makes it dead makes it feel dead life feels dead full of inanimate objects which of course objects aren't inanimate there is there is only this animation this movement this unknowable life that i say i know And I get really scared if it becomes obvious that I don't. Because I, I, I live on my need to control, my need to manage. But there is no need. That's the illusion. It's not that you go from being the manager of life to then not being the manager of life. That's not what we're talking about. This change that you're probably waiting for, or that you have been waiting for, is a change that doesn't happen. Although you'll be able to tell a story about how it happened. And I know, I know, as a seeker, when you're looking, when you're looking for the answer, you're looking for the answer. And you feel that an answer will give you what you're looking for. Well, and the terrible, the terrible news is that it's the obviousness that there aren't, there isn't an answer, is the answer that you're looking for. Well, that's not what you're looking for. I know. It's just not. that life doesn't need any answers. The answers give the illusion or the story of answers is the illusion that the answers will make it better, will make me feel better, will make my life better, will make my loved one's lives better, will make the world better. Well, it might just become obvious that the world's not interested in becoming better. Couldn't give a shit about your ideas of how you could make it better. Why would... <laughs> and um, there, is a, there is a wonderful lightness in that. A lightness that is incomprehensible to me because I have, I have, my foundation of myself is founded in knowledge, in knowing. And you don't need to know. Well, you need to know, but there is no need to know. 
you could say you are the you are the needing to know. That's and don't this is this is from a very early age. Think back to early childhood and how how much of conditioning is based on knowledge. And language and knowledge become synonymous. You know, if I know the words, if I can explain it, then I know, then I'll be safe. <laughs> and it's amazing how resilient self is to life showing self that it has no it has no intrinsic power to control life and keep itself safe. Life can show self that over and again, over and over again. But it is incredible how resilient I am is to that life revealing that, okay, what you thought was your control is illusory. Self will create endless stories to justify and make try and make sense of it in order to remain with the illusion of I'm managing this. I'm in I'm still in charge. Yeah, I had a little wobble there. I felt I felt a little bit insubstantial for a while. It was a real wobble. I felt reality falling away. It was slipping away at one point. I thought I was going insane. A few people around me thought I was as well, but I've wrestled it back. And now I'm back spinning the plates, juggling the balls, keeping it all in play. One of the great paradoxes is that the absence of the one who said they were in control or the seeming absence, there was never one, anyone in control, but the seeming absence of the one saying that they know what's going on and they're, they're managing their life. That complete insecurity that life, life is completely unsafe. I mean, absolutely unsafe is the security that you saw i mean if that isn't a paradox i don't know what is so seeming complete insecurity is the only safety safety from the one who desperately was trying to keep itself safe How much energy does self spend on keeping itself safe and secure? Most of it. Most of the energy is there in that. Sometimes consciously, mostly unconsciously. So David's just said the plates are spinning themselves. Well, there aren't even any plates, David. <laughs> the illusion of spinning the plates, both the spinner is illusory and the plates and the sticks that you might hold to spin them. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Spinning will look the same. The plates look the same, but there is a different quality to the plates and the, and the sticks that spin the plates without the one who needs to keep them spinning. The, you know, catastrophe, if I don't keep that, them, each of them going, then some catastrophe is about to befall me. Doesn't that sum up a lot of life? For a lot of 
people you know. Running from plate to plate, spinning, always looking over their shoulder for the one that they might have, they might have forgotten a plate that's behind them. <laughs> okay, enough of the spinning plates. I, I, do, I do tend to um, milk an analogy for all it's worth until, <laughs> until it, I've wrung it dry. <laughs> I don't think I've overdone that one. So, um, okay, well, nice to see you all. If you've got any if questions or sharing or anything else you'd like to say, then feel free. As long as you don't mention the plates. Hi, Dave. I was just wanting to ask you, what's your relationship with money? Money? Yeah. How does it sit with you? The yeah. idea of getting it, more of it, what mm. it can bring to you, the status it brings to have more money rather than less money. Yeah. Well, hmm. I think it's, I don't think it's changed much. Dave, if if you're asking me, is it different now? You know, different now than it was when I was <laughs> normal, for want of a better word. Um, I I was never seeking um, status through money. It never had that for me. I th I think it's because I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why. But generally, my my character didn't. Um, look for um, acclaim, acknowledgement, um, status through money. It was through other things, through relationship, through, um, through achievement, but not financial achievement. Hmm. I'd say that's pretty much the same now. Um, I do like, don't get me wrong, I like, it's funny, I've got a relationship with money. And by the way, that this has nothing to do with what, that your relationship to money would change. Because we're talking about, we're talking about an illusory self. In the absence of that, the character is more liberated. So if you liked money, and you gained status from money, I'd suggest that if you... Um, if there was less self or there was no sense of self that me became less influent influential in life if the character was such that money was really important to them then they would they would go seeking more money it's not um it isn't a clear cut oh non duality is about poverty uh i do think it this is a message about poverty, but it's a poverty that um, me couldn't imagine. So it's it's losing everything that was mine. So it's a poverty on a scale that money becomes insignificant. So it's it's that kind of poverty. I do think it's perhaps what Jesus was on about, but that's a guess. <laughs> You've heard me say that before, but I, I would guess when he was talking about poverty and, you know, you won't get into heaven being a rich man, that kind of stuff. I'm guessing he meant self. And um, really the core of that is just, to, you know, the sense of who your self-image and who you believe yourself to be. So it's much, it much more about a poverty of beliefs. But it is very obvious that um, this message has nothing to do with money. Not at all, you know.
I, I really like money for what it, you know, because I like buying stuff. I'm borderline shopaholic for certain things I like. Trainers, shoes, golf clubs. I'm really bad for golf clubs at the moment. You know that you just endless days sitting at home on the internet. You're doing it as well, I'm sure. And um, <laughs> of course, Mr. Bezos is um, doing quite well out of lockdown, I feel. Uh, he's getting quite a bit of trade from me, as well as you lot. <laughs> My brother, who's a postman, just endlessly swears about, about the crime that is Amazon that is killing all local, all small retailers. And um, this is getting quite political now. And um, <laughs> if, if anyone did create this pandemic, you know, if you want a conspiracy theory, look no further than Amazon Prime. I'm joking, but who knows? You know, anyway, so yeah, buying stuff money this this doesn't really have anything to say about it to be honest davis you know money or not but um oh thanks it was good but every every everyone there isn't anyone who doesn't like money dave come on you can buy shit you want yeah who doesn't like that i mean it's nothing to do <laughs> this message has nothing to say about that. And if I, yeah, again, I'll just reiterate that this message is talking about poverty, but poverty for me is not a financial thing. Because whether I've got money or, my, or not, it's not mine, is it? Yeah. I will, I will, I'll add something. I'm guessing, again, it's a guess. I guess without, without me and my need for security, there wouldn't be much saving money for a rainy day. Because rainy or otherwise, there isn't a day to come. So you probably won't be doing a lot of insurance, a lot of investing for the future, but you will be spending a lot of money on Amazon. Has anyone else got anything they'd like to say? Let's have a look in the chat, if anyone said anything. James, did you say there are no plates before I said it? Did you say it? I don't know. Are you not paying attention? Ah, uh, yeah, momentary lapse, sorry. Momentary? But that shows you're on the same brainwave. That's what I was saying. Did you say it before me? Um, or what I'm I guess I did. I think you I did, I did yeah. yeah. Okay, so well, I was just going to apologize for stealing your wisdom. It's not the first time. No, won't be the last either, James. <laughs> oh, you're you're wise, yeah, you the thing about you and me though, James, is of course you hide your wisdom much better than I do. <laughs> that's one way of putting it yeah oh, well yeah that's me just being rude no i know it's a compliment really i i can only say that to my very dearest friends yeah so you did say it before me um ebson says hi tim did tim the person have glimpses while experiencing art does art have a special place in this Nice, Ibsen. Es, Esben. Is that right, Esben? I think so. Um, I could say yes, 
I suppose, to the first bit about having glimpses. But I wouldn't say they're, no, not necessarily glimpses of one another, but beauty, yeah, the beauty of art. And um, if beauty is overwhelming, I think, for self, then there is a sense of self getting out of the way. You get out of your own way and there's the beauty. I mean, you don't do that, but that's how beauty can feel. There's just the beauty and there's no separation in that. But uh, does art have a special place in this? Most definitely not. There are no special places in this. Art is seen as a, <laughs> as a beautiful um, attempt to express It's a beautiful attempt to express beauty or whatever it's trying to express. And, um, and by art, I mean music and as well as sculpture and painting and, I don't know, gardening. Isn't gardening a wonder, you know? Um, human beings trying to change the world into something beautiful. But of course, art doesn't have a special place. There's nothing more beautiful than the chaos, the anarchy of nature. You look at, um, so where my apple trees are in the back of my, my caravan, there's um, apple trees. I've just left all the apples to decay. And I've not, I did, I did a lot of gardening in the, in the summer, but I haven't touched it since the weather turned because I'm a very much a fair weather gardener so it is it looks a dreadful mess well isn't that dreadful mess absolutely beautiful but it's not ordered it's the absence of you know human beings trying to order everything and that's beautiful so i wouldn't say art has a special place no no more than anything else But it, it's very moving to see human beings attempt to express the inexpressible, which you could say that's what art is. Not all art, but. Um, David asks, what's my handicap? Now I'm guessing he's referring to golf, although <laughs> he might not he might uh, my golf handicap when I had one which I've lost it now was 13 David that's just for you if you're not into golf then that doesn't mean anything um Has anybody got anything they'd like to say? Yes, Michael. Do you see what uh, is commonly thought of as enlightenment as being part of the dream, as being also part of the dream mm -hmm. of the objectified uh, yeah. overlay? Yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, as soon as you start, you could... I can, you could say everything that's spoken, as soon as we're speaking about what we're trying to speak about, then of course that, then it just becomes another story, just a different story. And all we are left with, in the end, all we're left with is all our beautiful stories, one no more significant than the other. And... Um, Yeah, and there is, there really, it's so, it's so screamingly obvious that there isn't enlightenment, because of course, enlightenment is a story that would happen to you, that could happen to you. And of course, this, this is the ultimate golden carrot that we've, that nearly everyone I know who's been on this circuit, you could say, as a seeker, 
whether they called it enlightenment or liberation or awakening or, you know, different words for this wonderful state that you could attain, that it's attainable. I think that's the... Oh. <laughs> we haven't had any crashes for a while. It's been a while, isn't it? Anyway, so um, yeah, just a story, just the stories, Michael. But hmm. Hmm. and there's nothing wrong with any of the stories. Some you'll like, and some you won't. Some you'll be drawn to, some you won't. Some will resonate, some won't. Um, hmm. But it, like you, like you say, Michael, I mean, the stories uh, are just beautiful stories. I've heard you say that. <laughs> and when they're just beautiful stories, of course, they are. They are more beautiful in there. You know, they have an empty. It's again, it's paradoxical, but the fact that they're empty of real substance and importance and significance. There's the beauty. The beauty is in that is in their, ah, well, their complete lack of substance. They're, they're, they're insubstantial and there's the beauty, all the beauty. If we're talking about art you know, or, or nature, everything that's really beautiful in nature is because it's so, so fragile. It's so fleeting. It's here and it's gone. It's never to be repeated. It's, Ah, there you go. <laughs> so, I mean, it is a great relief that there aren't any enlightened masters. I wouldn't underestimate that that whoever you've made into an enlightened master is just a bog standard, ordinary, wonderful human being. Isn't, well, how, isn't that immensely wonderful in itself? Isn't that beautiful? That every human being, there aren't any special ones. No, everyone is special. Every human being. Even the ones you detest. The ugliest, the nastiest, all of them. All of you, them who you've made, no, they're not it. They're not it. All the things you've pushed away. <clears throat> okay. Has anyone got anything else they'd like to say? In the chat, let's have a look in the chat. Um, Scott says, Tim, isn't it the end of believing that the world life experience can possibly be described? Yeah, but it doesn't stop you trying, Scott. Apparently, looks that way, doesn't it? The, <clears throat> <laughs> one of the great freedoms is you can't get this wrong don't get me wrong there's plenty of others will tell you you're getting it wrong but the great freedom is that there is no there is no right way of speaking about life there is no wrong way of speaking about life and uh wow there's immense freedom in that it's as if we caught our minds trying to give commentary during a game it never understood. No matter how many statistics, opinions, feelings, we throw at it. Yeah, you won't, you won't ever, it's, it's the end of the one who minds about others' opinions. Hmm. 
<laughs> this isn't the end because you will have heard that there's paths, there's methods, there's practices that you can do to stop the commentary, as if the commentary is a problem. Now, commentary in itself about what's going on, about what's happening, about how life is, there's no problem with that. The problem is the one that has a problem with that. Thoughts about what's going on <laughs> are the most natural thing. I mean, imagine a life without thoughts. So the commentary, what Scott's called the commentary, which we could say is self-talk. Typically in psychology, it might be called self-talk. It might be, it might just happen or seem to happen that when you talk to yourself, it might become obvious that there's no one listening. And if, the <laughs> and if there's no one listening, there ain't anyone talking either. But the commentary, and then the commentary is very light. Of course, commentary is only important and significant and heavy and needs to be acted upon, needs to be worked upon, because it's mine. And everything that's mine is significant. I don't have any insignificant thoughts, thank you very much. My thoughts matter, says me. And of course they don't. But they do to me though. Tim. Yeah. Hi, Scott. Hey. hey. So I, I've been following my, my commentary lately, even watching the news and, and seeing how impossible its task is to explain things. Yeah. But in a way, I think what the stories, their story is trying to create is, is an explanation for the up and down of life. They, they, don't, they haven't figured it out, but they're just trying to make a story about it. And I think we probably all do it as children, too. We, we make up stories to say, now I'm happy, now I'm sad, mm -hmm. but they're not related. No. And, and one of the things that I'm finding now coming to these talks with you is there's kind of a layer underneath where it's a continual happiness, but it's so continuous, it's like oil pouring. You don't even notice it. So, so I don't need a story anymore because the story was just to explain this fluctuation mm -hmm. that I was buying into. And I don't buy into the fluctuation now. I don't believe the, the I don't know what to think about the COVID or the uh, election or anything, but I'm just not letting it push me up or down at all because I found this constancy yeah. that's so much stronger and more beautiful that mm -hmm. there's no story, there's no need for a story. There's no, it's. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's nice. I mean, I could say, I could try and talk about a constancy, but I wouldn't even know what to say about it because <laughs> for me, the, cons the constant is the nothing, is empty. And uh, I haven't got anything to say, you know, I can't really. You, you wouldn't even notice it. Rather you wouldn't than, even. Uh, yeah, rather than peace, rather than happiness. Yeah, yeah. Ha happiness seems like something that will make me smile. And, um, yeah. or, you know, it's, a, it's emotional. I'd, I'd call it peace rather than, um, you know, but, still, stillness and peace rather than happiness. Okay. But um, Would you say that you chose yeah. it? Or would you say it just kind of became revealed? Because I'm not sure I, I stopped listening to my thoughts, for example. They just no, no, weren't I, really interesting anymore. I don't believe them. I no, don't believe the news. I don't believe it. You know, it's like no. everything. Uh, how does it? How did it happen? Well, the thing is, when I'm talking about <laughs> it, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. It's <laughs> because. So, like you say, there's the fluctuation. So you could say so the fluctuations, the up and down, are what's happening. Mm. And the. <laughs> the, the not happening, the what's happening and what's happening not happening, the not <laughs> happening is the peace, is the constant, is the 
you're, you're calling it happiness. Maybe you could call it an underlying contentment, but even that sounds too strong. Um, uh, some, some people call it the blue sky or the blackboard or whatever, the underlying reality. The, yeah. the ocean. My friend Paul always refers to it as the ocean. So the ocean and the waves are the real, really common analogy. I tend not to talk about that too much, but you could say that. So what can you see? Well, you see the waves. Well, what is beneath the waves? The waves are actually infinite depth of the absolutely still ocean. So the waves, the ocean, there is only ocean and the ocean appears to be waving. Hmm. And it's a, it's a nice analogy, but... Um, yeah, I don't even know what the question was. What were you saying? Like just this idea that the, we create the stories to explain the fluctuations. Yeah. Not that the, the not, we, and then what the mind does is it says, no, I'm causing the, uh, you know, I figured out why the fluctuations happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the Zen story of the guys looking at the flag and one says, moving, and another one says, no, you're mm -hmm. wrong. The yeah. wind is moving. And then the, the third, the teacher comes and says, no, your mind is moving. Yeah. So it's, this, it's like, I finally, I found out that I've been trying to figure out yeah. the, the fluctuations as if it needed a story, but the story was always the same. I'm putting too much attention on the fluctuations. Yeah. But I'm the, making it relevant when it is. But I mean, I can't, I can't make any recommendations about, you know, focusing on the emptiness or focusing on the yeah. stillness or focusing on the ocean, because um, that in itself just is, becomes a fluctuation, you could say. That's just, a, that would be a wave. Yeah, trying to be a not wave. Yeah, exactly. So that's like a wave trying to look into the depths and find the emptiness. Hmm. There's no finding. For me, this message is very, this is really straightforward. There is no thing for you to find you will not find what you're looking for. Now, that might sound the worst, but it's actually, there's all the compassion is in that. Mm. All I'm really speaking about is the one that was looking for what he was looking for, just stopped turning up. He didn't turn up for work. He just, he went out of business. He, uh, he went to bed and he didn't get up. <laughs> He stopped, he, you could say he retired, but he didn't retire of his own volition. He was, he was told, you're, you're, redundant. you're made yeah. redundant. <laughs> you, you're no longer required. There's no, there's no work done anymore. So it wasn't even that he was retired. It was that there wasn't any, there was no work. There was no more work. There was nothing to make a commentary on. It's like, it, it's like, yeah, there's complete unemployment. So now if I look at people in work on themselves, it's, it's obvious that that's, that's a pretense. They're pretending to work on themselves, self pretending that it's improving itself, that it's improving its life, that it's keeping itself safe. And um, all there is is great compassion for every human being who's doing that really innocently Um, because self can't do otherwise. Because the inherent sense of self is I'm incomplete and I need to complete myself. Whereas this is whole and complete. Could, could, could you say that we all got this kind of wobble in us because we were one year old or whatever and we're this consciousness and we're trying and we're being told that we're the body and we're being told that we're the name and the story and the whole thing and we're trying to make sense of it yeah and and after a while the wobble <laughs> just goes away because we we we've seen behind the whole charade but it was a fun game it was like a sitcom that lasts eight seasons you know and then and then it's over and then you know the people are actors again it just it lo loses its well, it loses its reality is what it yeah loses. yeah it's just that it's seen that the stories are just stories. And yeah. uh, the stories remain, but without them being, because really I've only ever been interested in one story. That's mine. 
And if you're honest, you're only interested in your story. Mm-hmm. I mean, you'll listen to other, you'll listen to other stories, but only for how they might be beneficial to mine. And if you if you don't get any sense that there's anything in their story for me, you sh- you'll turn that straight over, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, there's nothing there for me. Yeah, maybe the story was, am I, where am I going to get the love from? Where's the love? Yeah. There? How much love am I getting? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you could say it's uh, about love. Well, you could say that, that, that seeking for completion, you could call the wholeness and completeness of life, the love that you're seeking elsewhere, when it's only ever, you could say here and present and now, but none of those are actually close to how it really is. Yeah. There's only, there's only love, love alone. Yeah. And um, the thing that I could never get is that the emptiness is love. How could that be? Of course, emptiness must be something I'm sorry, love must be something. And of course, emptiness is nothing. So it can't be in, that can't be love. Yeah, and that is the love. Oh, that's really well put. Emptiness full of love. Yeah, the mind couldn't resolve that paradox. But it's not resolvable. Yeah. This is not, this is not a message of resolution. Yeah, that's why the mind couldn't, can't go where we're going. Exactly. So we're, yeah. And uh, you don't go there. You don't, you, there's, there's no place for you in emptiness. Of course not. You're full of yourself, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Where would, where would you go in emptiness? That's why this, <laughs> that's why this can be, if this gets heard, it can instill terror in me. It can instill a great, great terror in self and possibly a dreadful despair. Um, because there is, it is very obvious, there is no place for me in nothing. Emptiness is not somewhere I can stand. There's no ground for me to walk on. There's no handrail for me to hold. It doesn't make sense with all the logic, all the explanations all, and all, all the stories I've told forever. It doesn't All logic, yeah. all logic will not help you. All rational thought won't help you. Um, and you may have asked for this. Yeah, self may have asked for this. Mm-hmm. But from the experience here, that's not how it is if it appears. Mm-hmm. If the emptiness, which, you know, traditionally has lots of different names, the void, the abyss, mm-hmm. all, all full of terror for me. And the reason that it's terrifying it's very simple. It's just because it's there's nothing to know. Mm-hmm. The un the unknowable is just saying, well, there is nothing to know. This is already completely known, but you don't. There's no one knowing it. There's no knowing mm-hmm. what it is, how it is, why it is. But here it is, nonetheless. Without you needing to know anything about it at all. Isn't that, if you look at a one and a half year old child just playing, they have no language. They have no labels for anything. You could say they know nothing. Well, there you'll see bliss. There you'll see emptiness full of everything. There you'll see no separation between the seeming doer and the doing. It's just, um, yeah, if I could recommend anything, I would say go and, um, you might you might get arrested, but go and um, watch small children in the park. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I probably shouldn't be recommending that. It's best if you're related to them because you, you look less creepy. You look less My bracelet creepy. goes off if I do that. <laughs> <laughs> and rightly so, Joey. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really fortunate because I get to um, 
my my son is a year and a half and uh, I get to see him I just be with his utter free spontaneity yeah no thought <laughs> no concentration that's the other thing that becomes obvious our natural state is not to work you understand this so what we've forced ourselves through ourselves by being a self we've forced ourselves to do the same shit for at least eight hours a day every day of our lives well that shit ain't natural mm -hmm. that is torture <laughs> <laughs> but of course there you go and uh, our natural state is um being interested in something till you're not in till there's no interest in it and going straight on to the next thing and interest naturally lasts about a minute and a half i found <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, haven't doesn't haven't we made self the collective self hasn't it made um you know um sticking at things being um diligent conscientious haven't we made those into false gods you know false prophets that will bring you what you want bullshit Mm. Anyway, uh, that that by the way, really, that's nothing to do with non-charity. That's this character's. <laughs> that's been my opinion. That's been my opinion since the day I started work. <laughs> yeah, that's not really non-duality. That, but it's got a hint of it. Okay, we've got five minutes. So if you'd like to say anything or ask anything, then please feel free. While well, we've got a minute or two. Tim? Hi. Roberta, yes. hi. Yes. Well, that, that's what I've been wanting to ask you the characterization of what. Um, the character and the self can't be two or is when you get rid of self the character that you come into this universe with like um, you specialize in certain things like you see humor and things that maybe other people don't see or or you can tie your shoes better than the next guy is that is that the character of the person so there is, is that a, the self yeah. okay i'll try and um clarify that a little bit so when i'm talking about character it isn't a thing so there isn't a character oh, okay so there isn't a character by character i mean character traits so the things that um the human being called Roberta typically likes to do, typically dislikes um, um, the way in which that human being does things. You know, say maybe, so Roberta, do you like heavy metal rock music? That would be a completely no. So, oh, no. No, I could, that, I, I could have guessed that, but I didn't want to presume. And... Um, so that's why I'm talking about character now. So I'm saying it's not that Roberta, you dislike it, but the character, the nature, you, if you like, that's really a better word, probably. The nature of yeah. the human being called Roberta has a dislike for loud rock music. And all I'm, all I'm suggesting is that that dislike isn't your dislike, it's natural. That's what I mean by character. So this, this human being called Tim doesn't own any of, of the things that 
this human being likes, dislikes, does, doesn't do, says, doesn't say. Um, that's all, that's the illusion. The illusion is that there is an owner, a doer, a thinker, a, yeah, a claimer of what's being done or what's being liked or disliked. And the suggestion is that all of that is natural without anyone inside each human being doing it. And how is that? Do you know? I don't know. You, now, Roberta, you, I know you say you don't know, but you really do. I do. Yeah. It's as it is. And um, yeah. The uh, the one the one that's claiming it's doing and having and being and liking and everything else that I claim that is mine, that's that never was. And the absence of it is no absence at all. There you go. It's an absence that isn't an absence. Because. <laughs> <laughs> If I said it's an absence that you could achieve, of course, it would make it sound that they're here, there's something that's been lost that Roberta still has, and that's not what's being said. So that you don't go, you don't go from being a someone to a, you know, a not someone, a no one. Mm -hmm. There isn't a no one any more than there is a someone. Mm. And um, I do hear, you know, in non-duality circles, a lot of talk about no one, you know. Oh, yeah, well, they're no one, but I'm still a someone. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. There's, there's the great story. Mm -hmm. There's the story of enlightenment. There's the story of becoming. So you could become a no one. No. <laughs> There's no one to become a no one. Mm -hmm. There's and no you know, Tim, that... That that's something because when I when I listen, uh, and when I hear what you say, I know that. But then it's kind of like fades or something. I know that that I am. Yeah, you're and not. Know, you're not though. I okay. Sorry, Roberta. Uh, so, okay, if I put it another way, Roberta, I could put it another way. So you could say, you know, that sense of I am, that has been um, hijacked. The sense of am, being, is hijacked by me. That it's my being. So I is the illusion. Am is not. Am is, is, this is, am is, it's not my, it's not my am though, <laughs> it's not I am, just am, just is, just are, just being. Okay, here's another thing, Tim, I, I am not going to go uh, in any direction that I hear I, I've heard you say that you uh, listen to a lot of teachers or a lot of, of people. I did, yeah. And that's how you got to the place that yeah. you're, no, no, I, I real, I. That's not how I, I hear one thing, but I, I hear one thing and then I hear another thing. Yeah. Yeah, you better get you, if you listen to me, Roberta, there'll be a lot of contradiction. Well, I like listening to you. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> this, um, this message, <laughs> thanks, Roberta. This message is essentially contradictory. I mean, the, the very essence of this message is that, so there's only what's happening, there's only what this, this is, and this is equally and simultaneously, as well as happening, it's not happening. You can't get any more contradictory than that. 
that is the whole essence of the message. So, um, and that, by the way, um, that isn't said just to fuck with your mind. Mm -hmm. You know, that isn't said just to piss you up and go, what is that shit? That really is how it is. So there is just this, what seems to be happening. It's obvious. Right, and you this, is all, this is all of it. This is, this is the entirety. And then you try and, okay, try and find what's happening. Grasp it. You know, keep it. Find it. Have it. Get it. And it just okay. will forever just <laughs> slip through your fingers. You can't have it. There you go. Rest. Have a break. Make a cup of tea. Maybe a ginger nut. Hmm. Well, I might just do that. <laughs> Thanks, Roberta. <laughs> okay, lovely. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, Perfect. Yeah, thanks, Roberta. That was lovely. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks very much, everyone. Um, if you'd like to make a donation, you can uh, via PayPal. That would be very nice. Um, okay. But I don't feel you have to. Um, and uh, hope to see some of you on Thursday. Even though there is no Thursday or no hope that you'll come on Thursday, I hope to see you on Thursday. Just to carry on with the theme of contradiction. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Bye bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye bye. bye, -bye.